just a sec. I need to. The past few videos I've been looking like a savage. <laughs> you look good. Thanks. There's a very boat vibe going on with all this wood in the background. I don't That's know. true. It's actually a 50 foot yacht and we're not telling you. <laughs> would you say that we're soulmates? I would say so. Yes. What is your definition of a soulmate? My defi definition of a soulmate is when two people basically feel this attraction, strong attraction for each other. Like and magnetic? Yeah, exactly. They cannot explain why and, uh, and they can connect on many, many different levels. You want to know what my definition of a soulmate is? Yeah. I think that a soulmate is somebody who walks into your life completely unexpected and shifts your whole world and changes like your whole life. I like that. <laughs> Let's talk about when we first met. Okay. Because it was so freaking unexpected. You were making a movie on my favorite spiritual teacher at the time and I knew you were making that film because I saw the trailers and I found you on Facebook and I messaged you. Yeah. And that's how I found you. Yes. I think you sent a link or something. You said I have a YouTube channel or something. Oh my god, I sent you that? I think so because I saw the... It's getting dark. Wait. Can I turn on this light? Yeah. Ooh. Sorry about the lighting change. We <laughs> always decide to film a video when the sun is setting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. And then I saw this video where you were singing, okay? Mm -hmm. The way you were singing was not just singing, you were just pouring all your heart into that song. <laughs> and that, and, and, and you, you seem to me so open, no masks, nothing, just you there singing with all your heart, open heart and so on. And that was the first time when I was struck by you. You want to know what my first impression of yeah. you was? When I first met you in person, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you were very different than you are now. Mm. Um, I don't know why you were so different, but you came across to me kind of like... Serious? Serious, but also not giving a fuck about anybody you know that kind of like super arrogant assholey vibe that's what i was getting from you honestly my first impression of you didn't change for a while <laughs> I know. like i didn't like you I, I really didn't like you very much we were not attracted to each other in the beginning not at all nothing yeah. we were like two acquaintances two yeah. strangers but did you like me Yes, I liked you. I liked you as a person. I liked you even more when we started talking about things because we can, we could communicate more. And I liked how deep you were delving into any topic that we were talking about, anything. You are this free diver, you know, <laughs> into the depths of the oceans. And no matter what we were talking about, and you were coming up with all these insights that were very stimulating for me, right? And then that was my third impression, you know, like, I'm how smart. is it possible <laughs> that this young woman can, can get to these levels of uh, wisdom sometimes or even emotional intelligence, you know? Yeah. You want to know what I started liking about you? Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move forward. Once we started spending more time together, you know, mm -hmm. connecting, talking, I noticed that I loved your energy. Oh. I just liked being around you for no <laughs> reason whatsoever. <laughs> I felt it in my body as a sensation and I was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> but it wasn't attraction. It wasn't like, it wasn't sexual. It mm -hmm. wasn't physical. Like it was just, I just liked sitting next to you. Yeah. In fact, what's strange about us is that I would say like a few months, a few yeah. weeks into knowing each other, yeah. we started being like physical yeah well we were uh like sometimes holding our hands or touching the back or things like that yeah right? we would we would have these mm -hmm. really awesome conversations and then after a while we were, were cuddling yeah we were cuddling we started, after we started cuddling <laughs> for me even if we were doing that yeah. usually okay 
some people can think, isn't this something that takes you exactly to intimacy or sexuality and stuff like that? In this case, I wasn't thinking about that when I was cuddling. I was just responding to to an instinct and and on that moment, on the spur of a moment. And it felt so... And it so felt good. like, yeah, you, you were feeling exactly the same. I remember there were times where we would be sitting on separate couches and mm-hmm. just like having a conversation, mm-hmm. nice deep conversation. And I'd just be sitting there like waiting, when is she going to come to this couch so we can cuddle? Like I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was like very serious at the beginning. It yeah. was always serious. You were so you know, serious. And then talking and then... I, when is she calling me? <laughs> oh my god! Because <laughs> I was really asking you. <laughs> yeah, asking you. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you know to invade. I don't know how we would communicate that, yeah. but eventually yeah. you would come and. We and would it's cuddle. interesting because in that moment, in those moments at the very beginning, whenever I would feel this this way, I wouldn't think, "Oh my god, you know, there is an age gap here, which is quite, you know." Mm. A lot. I would never think about our age. Yeah. It was like a timeless moment, a spaceless moment, uh, moments that were going beyond any physical restriction. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't thinking of us in terms of a relationship. Yeah. Like, what are we? Who are we? I wasn't thinking about that. It was a soul to soul. Yeah. Connection. So is this when you thought that we were soulmates? Yeah, mm. I feel like that's where you kind of get a sense of, um, yeah, this is like a really soulmate vibe here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is not a fairy tale romance story at all. We, as two human beings, I feel like we were not able to relate to each other on a physical level mm-hmm. without, Tr- like, triggering each other, yeah. poking each other's buttons all, yeah. all over the place. And it was bad. Yeah. It was really bad. I feel like part of what a soulmate is, is that they are the person who can trigger the most in you. So they can trigger the most healing in you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the moment, it didn't feel nice. Yeah. <laughs> when you were triggering all like daddy issues and everything was coming out and yeah. I couldn't stand looking at you. There were days I couldn't couldn't stand you I was like kicking you out of my room yeah yeah um, and I'm sure it didn't mm. feel good for you either no but no sometimes I was like I had enough of this <laughs> yeah <laughs> in it. fact we almost like broke a, up like 20 a, times yeah but we kept coming back together yeah that's the funny part yeah why did yeah. you keep coming back to me when I was like kicking you out of my life so hard when we go back to uh, a partner there is a part of us that is still trying to go into that dynamic so that because it's not some, the issues are not solved yeah so by going into that dynamic and playing out those roles for each other it gives us the possibility the chance every time to look at this in a different way unfortunately most of the times we don't have that strength or that awareness to look at the issues in a different way Mm -hmm. We tend to go back into those issues, seeing it over and over and over again in the same way. Yeah. And that there's no way out. It becomes just a frustration on top of frustration on top of frustration. And then, you know, eventually... They break up. Yeah, there is a breakup. I almost feel that the issues we're still resolving aren't the issues in our relationship. It's just our own individual issues that are being brought out by this relationship exactly like the relationship is almost like a tool it brings out tool. whatever yes. is unresolved in us yes and it's it's freaking chaotic sometimes i think that a key into hanging in there you know, yeah 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 is to not to take it personally really it's to make a huge effort okay why is this person behaving like this now it tr- it's triggering me and so on so there is a you know <laughs> a back and forth of yeah. uh, triggers and a back and forth and it never ends if we don't take it personally you know every time something like that happens then there is a way out i think for me the key is just asking yourself is my partner really abusing me 
or does it just feel that way because I've been abused before? There's a lot of difference between a partner abusing you and a partner triggering you. And sometimes it feels the same way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Being able to make that differentiation, no, oh, wait, she's not really abusing me, mm -hmm. basically making it not about you. It's just my, my path, like my journey. Yes. In the good moments, the amount of love I feel for you mm -hmm. is what confirms for me that you're like my soulmate. Because, yeah, you're changing my life, and it's kind of uncomfortable most of the time. Because <laughs> change is always uncomfortable. But now, when I look back, I can see that my life went into a really good direction mm -hmm. because of you. I can say the same. Yeah. I can say the same because as soon as you enter my, in my life, many, many things that before you seemed to me impossible, they became possible with you. And it was amazing because I needed that kind of support, you know, for me to really shift somehow and going towards a direction that was, that is, has been positive. And, and both of our lives have changed so drastically since yeah. we met each other. It's insane. And it's keep on going. It's so yeah. fast. Fast pace change. I really wanted to be more myself, be more spontaneous, be more, you know, closer to my heart. I mean, you were an example for me in mm -hmm. that, right? So bathing in that energy, in such an open-hearted and spontaneous energy was very... You know, it was like a teaching, by, a teacher by itself, coming from a generation where people are telling you, no, this is not possible, you have to live life in a certain way. Okay. And then meeting you and supporting me into the idea, no, I can live a life in a different way. So that was huge for me as well. So maybe that's why the universe kind of matched us, because me being a younger generation, mm -hmm. I gave you some keys to your freedom exactly you were a gift for me in a different way in which way you know how i was so depressed your hyperactivity <laughs> which you think is a bad thing was really actually helping me mm -hmm. because when you put us together like we balance each other out <laughs> and you helped my life move forward mm -hmm. you brought that kind of energy into it because I was stuck like I was stagnating mm -hmm. and when you came into my life things started to change really quickly mm -hmm. and they kept on changing and they didn't stop and I feel like when we're together we can be more brave mm -hmm. because Definitely. instead of one there's now two <laughs> exactly. stubborn people who want the same kind of change in their lives <laughs> exactly you know? and yeah, it's cool. amazing even if you find your soulmate, it might not be easy. It might not even seem like they're your soulmate to begin with. If you stick with it and if it's you know, taking you in a good direction, it might surprise you. You surprise me. You surprise me a lot. <laughs> and you keep surprising me and it's amazing. Yes, if you feel that there is potential in the couple, just stick to each other. Unless you're abusing each other, in which case, you know, sorry. <laughs> you. It's okay. Speaking about abuse. <laughs> oh my god. That's it for today. We hope you liked. No. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah. So that's it for today. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. We're so bad at endings.